Dragon Sentinels in the multiverse, and this time we're going to do something that I usually don't do. And I'm making an exception on account of challenge mode coming out so recently. So normally for the randomized starts, I consider these wastes of time because you could set this game up and play it without anything special need to be set up. What's worse is you have a team here that actually has no deck manipulation, no environment control. They really have nothing going for them. The only thing that kind of can be going for them would be Gloomy. The problem is, on his challenge edition, his relics are indestructible, so one of his win conditions is actually gone, and he's much more likely to flip. Now, the trade-off is Gloomweaver himself pretty much only relies on two main types of damage, mainly Infernal and Toxic. He can get melee from his minions, and the Cursed Acolyte does, uh, fire and maybe Infernal? I, I don't know what the second type is, but I know at least does fire damage. And then we have the whole problem of his relics being invincible. So your success here is going to be entirely reliant on how fast you can get Lexia set up. So you're going to want Naturalist in Gazelle form so that you can give her as many card draws until you can get the Legacy Ring and two next Evos into play. And then once you do, well, then you can try to nullify everything. Next card you'll need though is Lead from the front so you can start pulling the damage from the other guys. Now, Naturalist, once you have the card set up that you want for Bunker and Legacy, you can actually switch him over to Rhino form and have him try to tank, or you can switch him to Gator form and have him try to go offensive. For Scholar, he's here primarily as a tank, Bunker is here as your DPS, and I have no idea why they gave you Captain Cosmic, he is like the most random one of the bunch. And like I said, if you actually look at what these guys have, there's Danger Sense, to kind of help you with the environment. There's environmental allies, but there's no targets in the Freedom Tower deck. It's all rooms for the most part. And the worst part is, for the entry points, like, I don't know how this group is supposed to get rid of those because you have nothing to clear them. So your success here, I think, is pretty much just trying to make yourself immune to damage, thin out the horde, and then try to beat him down. But anyway, training day. The team went through the training exercise quickly and efficiently as they had a thousand times before. Bunker keyed the microphone and sent his usual clip tone. Good. Next up, Pattern Gamma. As a horde of shuffling zombies began to materialize, Felicia yawned and adjusted her cave. How many times do we have to do this? The scholar's room marking explode in preparation for another battle. As many times as... He was interrupted by a shot from Captain Cosmic, high above. These fiends are no holograms. Freedom Wardens, our time is now. So you pretty much need a bunch of stuff to play this. Mini Pack 2, that has Scholar in it. Infernal Relics, that's Gloomweaver. Wrath of the Cosmos for uh, Captain Cosmic, and Vengeance for Naturalist. So luckily you don't need Rook City. Although ironically, Expatriate wouldn't be too bad here because of the RPG launcher, and even Nightmist would be welcome due to her Planar Banishment. So, I'm not really expecting to win this one, but let's see. Can't stress it enough, these are usually a waste of time. All this delicious despair, I can almost taste it. Let me in, mortals. From the cosmos to realms beyond, your villainy shall go no further. So, if you want to read. Damn it. Challenge mode is Chaos Dimension, Villain Relics are indestructible, so the second line here is completely nullified. There is no win condition here. Well, I take that back. I believe you actually could discard his relics if certain cards come out like Vast Following. It's possible he could, like, hamstring himself. It's just I don't see that happening, and I don't even know if Vast Following actually does that exactly. Top five cards. No, it puts relics into play, so yeah, he can't even do that. Anyway, once he has all those relics out, he's gonna flip. That's gonna cost him to heal for 50 hit points because they give you five guys here. Whenever a cult is destroyed, zombies come out like usual, and then he's gonna hit the four guys with the highest HP for toxic damage based off the voodoo pins in play. 
So out come a horde of zombies. It'd be nice if he didn't actually get an initial card play with this, but yeah. Cursed Acolytes. <laughs> this is so stupid. It really doesn't matter. So the Acolyte's just gonna nuke everything, and if I don't have a, uh, like an external combustion bunker would help a bit. Since this is his base power, he can only draw a card. As such, I'm going to give him the Cosmic Weapon. I need to kill that Acolyte as soon as possible. So we're going to use Absorption here so that we can try to put something into play. The Energy Bracer would help sometimes. So I could redirect. This would help to nullify the zombies if I go into Rhino form. I believe Rhino has one point of damage reduction. Yeah. The problem is with this... He's going to get hammered by this. He's going to take two damage for each hero in play. Unless I can find some way to mitigate that somewhere else, which I don't have. If I have the next Evo, I have Fortitude. This is why I need to actually give card draws to Legacy. Let's see, if I were to go Rhino for him, I can heal for two. I'm gonna do this. I gotta kill that Cult or the Cursed Acolyte as soon as possible. So we need to go into our deck and pull out the formidable Rhinoceros. Environmental allies, which is worthless here. So, whenever villain card is destroyed, you may draw a card. We need to get this out so I can start stocking up. I can try to get the Omni Cannon out next turn. So, we're going to use this on the Acolyte, and I can eye laser him, I hope, with Legacy for the kill. Flat Cannon's nice. So, yeah, I'm going to do the next Evo. There's no zombies for him to play. Turret mode for bunker, so he's actually getting really well set up. <laughs> Go figure. So right here we can throw caution to the wind. Let's throw caution to the wind. Choose for me. Top card into play. Harsh offense. I can deal four damage, which I'm sending into Gloomweaver. Top card into play, naturalist. Cornered beast, I'll take it. Top card, Bunker. Grenade Launcher, sweet! Top card, Legacy. Takedown, even better. <laughs> I have Solid to Liquid, which I'm not going to keep, and then my power here... Discard zero cards, plus one, so I can hurt myself, but I think I can redirect that. I'm hoping I can. Sweet. Let's start thinning out the zombies. Mission Control, reveal the top card of each hero deck in order. It's a one-shot, so it gets discarded. One-shot discarded. Turret mode, I have to destroy that, I'm afraid. One-shot discarded. Bring what you need, sweet. Why are they... Oh, crud, I miscalculated. So, yeah. He's getting beat here. I thought they only did two damage, but I'm probably used to Gloomweaver. Yeah, it's based off heroes. I usually play him with four heroes present. So I can give this to him, and now I don't have to worry about that. We're going to use this just in case something else threatens to destroy my setup. I would love to get a destructive response or even a dynamic siphon into play, but we'll make do for the time being. 
So I have this to instigib one of the zombies. We need to put out the other indomitable force. So I want to hit one of the healthy ones. Gave an ammo drop to Bunker. Gatling gun, sweet! So with Gatling gun, I can just mow down the zombies. Yeah, turret mode needs to go bye bye. Does it automatically attack? Okay, I get to choose. So that's good. So I want to get the flat cannon out. Actually, no, not this turn. I'm going to do the Gatling gun after all. So we're going to use the grenade launcher to really thin out the zombie horde here. Got the adhesive foam grenade, which I'm probably going to need to abuse here, which is why I'm a little hesitant about going into turret mode. Got a maintenance unit, and our one damage shot is going to finish this one. Now, I should put out a disclaimer, it's possible I could actually um, unlock termination depending on what the conditions actually are, since that's not known. I don't know. So, I, I want to put out Fortitude here, but I also want to do this one for healing. Scholar's going to get more healing this turn than normal, and we have tanking from here. So I'm going to go ahead and punch Gloomweaver in the face. Lead from the front is one of the cards I need. Do I want to keep Solid Liquid? I'm going to keep it just because why not, I guess. As for card play, I'm going to play Hold Fast. That way I can get five cards instead of just getting three. I'm fishing for Flush to Iron like usual. Keep moving, Truth Seeker. There's the entry point. So that offsets my energy bracer, I'm afraid. Profane Zealot. So yeah, even if I gave this to Naturalist, it actually wouldn't do anything. tempted to give this to Bunker or someone, but we're going to put out this one for now. We're going to keep Absorption going. We've got another Energy Brace, which I'm going to slap on Lux. So there goes Indomitable Force. Blend into the pack is going to be helpful later on just for trying to mitigate some damage. But for the time being, I can use this, or I can put this into play. I think I want to go Gazelle. Gazelle is also going to let me heal up too, so there is that. Hyperactive Senses, I can use that to try to do some deck shenanigans, I guess. Profane Zealot reduces damage dealt to villains, so we're gonna go ahead and hit him with the Gatling gun here. I can set... Hmm. I can use an additional power if I do that. Okay, Scholar's gonna need to punch the zombie. We're gonna put out the flat cannon here. Now the eye lasers from Legacy should finish him. So right here we're going to part with recharge mode because we don't really need it. So I can actually put out Surge of Strength here, and then I can punch the Zealot. And this will give healing to everyone, including crud. Zombies out. But 
this way I meant by the entry points are going to screw us. So at this point, I'm going to part with that. We're going to use keep moving to get flesh and iron out. When the medbay comes out, mortal form to energy actually becomes decent, but for the time being, we're using this. And now I can use Truth Seeker. And this will stop some of their damage. I got so lucky with that ammo drop on Bunker. Now their entry point gets shuffled in and a different card gets played. We got the secondary lab, I don't remember what that does. I don't play a lot of Freedom Tower, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Reveal the top cards. No, I want that one. No, I need the Resilient Hide. I could part with this. Nope, I need Danger Sense. Actually, no, I don't. I don't think anything here hurts me. No, I don't want to dismiss anything. And unfortunately, with Scholar going last, I can't actually take advantage of any of that. Uh, this could bring out all of his relics. So one Profane Zealot for damage reduction. A Cursed Acolyte for a crap load of damage across the board. That can actually wipe out all the... Constructs. And I can't actually hurt anything here with this, so... So yeah, I'm going to play Dynamic Siphon on uh, New Legacy here. Not a freaking thing I can do. Would love to play Blend into the pack, but I can't afford it. So the top two cards of any two decks. First up is Bloom Weaver. Second is Legacy. So we want to put the Pouch of Bones on top. We're going to get rid of the Surge of Strength because it's already in play. Bloom Weaver. Legacy. And I'm going to use the Gazelle to heal here, because I don't have anything else to do at the moment. I have to kill this now to try to get through its damage reduction. I wanted to get Omnican maintenance unit out here, but I think I'm kind of forced to go in turret mode. It sucks that I discard the one, because that's all my turret modes. So we need to kill him. It's gonna bring out a zombie, of course. And somehow in the end, the zombie is the le lessest, least threat on the field. So if I could get one more, I'd love to get that out. I'll sack that. So I'll play Fortitude here. I may 
want to go into upgrade mode just so I can start playing more cards with Bunker. Let's see if I were to actually play Grace Under Fire. So three non-heroes in play, I can use that to blast this and then I can take down the other one. The problem is the pouch of bones I think is like the... Okay, that actually cuts into a lot of his healing, so it's not bad to get rid of that one, I guess. landing pad. Unfortunately, that affects him. So yeah, I'm going to discard that. That's not going to help me here. Blend into the pack we can part with. I want the external combustion. I may need it. We need the next Evo. I'm going to keep that one handy just in case. I imagine the drum or something. Okay, a profane Zella, because why, can I, why am I allowed to deal damage? <laughs> Let's put this on Legacy, and we're going to put lead from the front out this turn. I need the Legacy Ring over there bad. Oh, reduced by the number of environment targets in play, so that's a worthless card in this environment. Yeah, Danger Sense is not going to help me either, I'm afraid. So, two Legacy Rings. <sighs> yeah, we're gonna give her the card draws. I guess for the time being, I can put out the... So if I destroy this, I'm able to play cards again. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna start charging up the Omni Cannon. Oh my god, Legacy's freaking blandy bad. So I have to eye laser him to kill him, it looks like. So 2 plus 1 minus 2. And this is going to bring out a zombie yet again, which I have to kill on Scholar's turn. Now I can set up a combo of sorts where I want to use Heroic Interception when I have the Alchemical Redirection out and it's going to nullify a crap load of damage. Now we know his top card is flush to iron, so I can do Don't Dismiss Anything. Choose for me. Top card into play. Harsh defense. Well, there goes the energy brace. We're gonna fire this into Gloom Beaver since it's a nice chunk of damage. Top card Natch. One target, two melee damage. Perfect. Nope, never mind. Top card into play. External combustion. So he's gonna hurt himself. Top card into play. Bolster ally, so Rome gets a card drawn. That just screwed over my flesh to iron. So there's a slim chance I could pull no one to turn loose. If I do, I'm screwed. Solid to liquid. 
I've discarded one card so far. I'm best off just punching him, I think. Okay, we got one of the turn looses. Medical ward, so I need to get uh, formed energy out. No, I can use sustained influence. That one I sorely need. Yeah, we can part with Omni Cannon. Don't need that one either. Nope, I want Proverbs and Axioms. Chosen Disciple. It's gonna pull a zombie out. No, he can take it. So I'm thinking I may want to use Augmented Ally on Bunker, so that he can get an additional card play. But I can put this on... We'll give this one to Scholar, since he can hurt himself. It's a good chance we can use this to get rid of another relic. We need the legacy ring too. Sable pin, legacy ring. Ooh, this is a tough one. I want the inspiring present so I can hurt more people. <laughs> as psychotic as that made sound. Most cards in play is going to be new legacy, I'm afraid. And does that work at the start of her? I can't see it right now. I'm going to discard a Freedom Tower card. I'm hoping it was an entry for- Hoo -hoo. I'm gonna discard a card from Bunker so I can get closer to flipping his deck. So do I have something to play on her turn here? I could play the next Evo, but I want the Inspiring Presence, I think. So that'll give her the Ring and the Presence. We now have Natural Born Vicar here, which I can use next turn and start healing him up. So right here we need to go for the Chosen Disciple. Yes. One. Two. Three. We're getting this into play right now. And if I use this, I can thin out the horde here. So I don't need another heavy plating. Now with the Legacy Ring, I can down her instantly. I think it's going to help more than the... Um... Actually, I need to see how the Sable Pen works right now. the end of that hero's turn, okay. So we want to hit her to finish her off. It's gonna bring a zombie out, but that's not a big deal. And just... I'm gonna ignore the zombies here. Melee damage. Next turn I have to put out a different one, or um, I'm going to get rid of Expect the Worst. I don't need that one. Keep moving so we can get the form of energy. I'm going to use this on Gloomweaver just because I can. 
So how many cards have I discarded? One, so I can do two damage with that, but it won't give me a card draw, so let's go punch him. Cryo Chamber. I need to see how lead from the front works because I may need to nullify cold. cold. By a villain card, so everyone's going to be taking cold damage from here. And I can't use this because this only works on targets. So choose for me. Nope, Cosmic Crest is one of the ones I could look forward to. Predator's Eye is helpful. We don't need the Grenade Launcher. Don't need this. I'll keep that. No. here actually does matter because I can keep stuff healed. So I can actually give this to Legacy and she can have three power plays per turn. But I do need some better cards here. Cosmic Crest is going to be a start. So we need the Vigor right here and now. Could give the card draws to Bunker to try to flip it. Oh crud, that's on him. Extremely tempted to go into recharge mode just to try to mitigate some of this damage. I'm afraid I'm gonna have to take it though. So that's 12 damage so far. Sacrifice something under the Omni Cannon? Okay, sweet. We're gonna discard this. So, yeah, that pin is actually kind of harmless then. I can put out more cards than I can destroy. So we're going Inspiring Presence after all. Now I need to see this. Is that end of turn or start of turn? Start of turn. Start of turn. 
so I could really go for a takedown here. Let's see, what does he have the most of? Pins. We'll go melee, I guess. Superhuman durability is helpful for the pins. Spec the worst and get out of the way. So all damage should be redirected into him, which is not actually a good thing at the moment. I'm gonna do this to Gloomweaver. And I'm gonna try to go for the kill here. I don't want this to last as long as that boss game did. Otherwise, I could start doing Bring What You Need to try to, uh. We need to heal Scholar first here, Order Matters. So I can send this into the Sable Pen to kill him. No, it's not. Adhesive Foam Grenade. And now, order no longer matters. Wraith's Arsenal. That's one of the cards I wanted. We don't need that. I have it in play already. Don't need upgrade mode. Ooh, takedown. No, I won't keep moving. It's gonna give me an additional card. So here, order does matter. I want to hit the constructs first. Oh, and the siphon takes damage. I messed up. So, yeah. I'm gonna eye laser then. I thought it was when she took damage. Should be able to kill a zombie here, I think, now. No. Down it goes. Sable pin. See, I'm not sure who I want to give this to. It's not going to help Captain Cosmic. For the time being, we're going to put this out, though. I could heal my constructs, but they don't need it. No. It's time to go offensive. One target, two melee damage, or two targets, one toxic. any equipment in here I need that I don't already have. I could get the power source, that'd be something, I guess. So that'd do 17 damage. I might finish him off with that, we'll see. 
So I'm not going to lie, I've gotten extremely lucky here with him not pulling any of his relics yet. You're going to have to get Lingo. Sacrifice this. Now he's no longer the highest HP, apparently, and that's the Scholar. So we'll put this out. I'm gonna go immune to Psychic here. may backfire, but I'll take the chance. Order here actually does not matter. Now I need to hit the Sable Pin so that the Legacy Landing Pad does not work on the Captain Cosmic can draw a card. Naturals can draw. Bunker can draw. Scholar can draw. And we'll skip there so that it doesn't get destroyed. Cast its playground. We want that one. We want the Indomitable Force in case we need to go Rhino. We do not need the ammo drop, though. Don't need Flying Smash. Don't need Truth Seeker. So we want to do this one first. That way we can hit the pin harder. Now we can protect one piece of equipment. I don't know, the Scholar's going to absorb all of it for the team. Sure. So it's not actually making a difference here, is it? <laughs> Indigo pin. Naturals can afford spare cards. And it figures by the time I get the autonomous blade, that's when he's gonna go down. We'll slap this on bunker. He's gonna die to Predator's Eye. No, I don't want to draw cards. I want to deal pain. So I'm not gonna lie, there was a very, very strong element of luck. Had the entry points come out sooner or even got his stuff out, like the drum or the book, that would have been a totally different game. So if you can't mint this, do not blame yourself or anything like that, because with the whole random start and the way this is set up, it does not actually favor you as much as you think. It is very, very possible to get a bad draw that will sink you. So to explain a little bit, I'm actually going to pull this up. I probably should have did this in-game since the hero values would have been filled in. But uh, Gloomweaver... So we'll go to show cards. The drum would have did five damage to uh, each hero. Yeah, it actually damages the heroes themselves, not the constructs from Captain Cosmic. 
And I can avoid this by discarding, which is not very good at times. Or I have to sacrifice a card on the field. So this basically stalls your progress one way or another by denying you the card draws and running your hand out and then destroying your field or one or the other. Just something like that. The only mercy you have here is that the uh, Scholar and Legacy can redirect. It's just only Legacy can actually redirect and not take too much damage. And you can nullify this since it's infernal. For the book, deals each hero target, so this will wipe out the constructs. X infernal damage, where it's based off the number of cards discarded this way. So at the start of the turn, each player may discard. Oh, X minus the number of cards discarded this way, so this would be 5, enough to wipe out all of the uh, constructs just like that. Then this would keep the zombies coming into play to reduce the damage they take, and then Legacy's landing pad would reduce that even further. And then had the uh, Profane Zealot come out, that would have reduced it even more. Three damage reduction on each zombie. That is insane. So basically if that happens, you basically have to go after Gloomweaver. You need to hope Legacy is able to go invulnerable against the melee damage lead from the front with the next Evo, and just take him down. And then the Acolyte you saw can deal 6 damage to everything on the map, wiping out all your constructs and everything. And the relics are indestructible. Your only way to kind of evade them is if you get lucky with the uh, naturalist like I did with gazelle form and everything. But still, this will pull them out faster. I cannot emphasize enough how lucky I actually got. And Freedom Tower itself is not as friendly. The card I really got lucky in evading was the Training Simulator, so this will basically pull more stuff out of the trash, and it's a villain target, so even if you discard one of his relics, this can pull it out. This can pull out a cultist, it can pull out so many freaking annoying things. So I think your only way to mitigate that is if you're able to place Entry Point on it, so you basically wipe out its text. Trade-off is, though, you do have to take more damage as a result. So, like I said, it would have been nice if they gave you someone who could mitigate some of the environmental damage, or just in control the environment in some way. I can't help but think, like, Omnitron would have been a much better tank of sorts. With a correct coating, you can use the bio beam to just pop whatever doesn't go your way, and... You can just give other card plays to other heroes. I would have recommended him over a naturalist. It's also kind of annoying they gave you that naturalist instead of Hunt a naturalist, but... So yeah, cannot stress enough, that was mostly luck. I'm the Hero of Light, do not expect these randomized ones in the future. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.